And that's the motor hub that's making the whining. Yeah, look at that. I'm well happy with that. It hadn't been spinning very fast because it hadn't turned into the wind properly, but because of the how I wanted the design to not have a tail, because I wanted the design to not have a tail, uh, that's how it worked. But now it's turned into the wind, it's really going round, and because it is uh, producing electricity, it's making that humming noise. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, do some testing on it. I don't know how much power exactly it's producing, but. I'll find out, I'll put it up in the next video. Take it easy. Yo, what's up? Another video about what I plan to do with the uh, turbine. I'm just going to show you. I've got it set up through the rectifier and through this meter and to the LED. I'm just going to put the camera down while I uh, give it a crank or two. Get a pen, get a pen. Where's the pen? There. So that's about one and a half RPMs. The meter's only reporting three watts, which I think is a bit off because I think that light needs more than three watts to do what it's doing now. So I guess that's another way you could test it if you wanted. I'm just gonna turn the lights off for a effect. So yeah, that's that. And I also wanted to show you that I've got it in the vise. You can see with the that has to be the back end of the turbine, and this has to be the front end. Uh, if we go up like that, and that's going to be looking at the front of the turbine, there's going to be a shaft around here. Let me use a random bolt to show you where I mean. There's going to be a shaft coming out here. And this shaft, actually it'll be more like that, this shaft will have to have a gear on it which drives this turbine round. Turbine. I'm already calling it a turbine, you know what I mean. So the original thought I had was to have some kind of drive belt going in here, which I knew wasn't ideal for quite a few reasons. So when I flipped it over, I was very happy to see this, and I was wondering if I will be able to actually connect some kind of gear to this it wouldn't there's not enough room for it to take a complete derailleur and that would be pointless anyway even if i could just get one gear on it then that could work obviously the brake disc will come off unless it makes sense to keep it on there for whatever reason which i can't see and then what will happen with these is these will be connected into a frame so, so that can't move the uh you might be thinking well can't you have it the other way around and fix this and move this Okay, you can't, I can't really think of any way to do that when there's a wire on the back of it, because then you'll have the wire spinning around like crazy. So th these will slot in in the same, similar way that my uh, other project did. And uh, 
and really what I'm going to have to do because I'm serious about going ahead with the project is to butcher the wheel I was looking in here and there's just lots of rusty rusty bolts so I know it sounds pretty brutal but I'm going to have to get the grinder out and chop the uh, spokes off so that will be the next step that's what it looks like without the brake disc on a couple of bike gears but if you look at the back I think the only way I can connect this is if I keep some of the pedal block which I don't think I can do because it's really in reality it's all about these mountain holes which are 45 44 mil apart so something a cog needs to connect to this somehow and then turn that like so this obviously as I keep saying is going to be fixed in you can't have it any other way because of the wires unless you could knock up some slip ring malarkey but yeah so that's what I've got to do is I've got to suss out how to connect a gear of some kind to that I'm not sure uh, you know normal bicycle chain will be any good this is some chain I bought for another one of my projects I'll just grab that I can measure it for you see this stuff's quite beasty it's 15 mil wide without the little pinion things. If I may try and measure it with a pinion, it's about 16 and a bit. No, it's actually 17. So, yeah, I basically really need to try and, if I want to do it, I need to get, try and get two sprockets for that. And the shaft on the top of the turbine will have the big sprocket, I think. And this one will have the small sprocket. I don't want to make it too difficult to turn. Uh, problems I've got there is uh, I might have to use washers because I don't want to have to be cutting a perfectly circular hole out this size. So I'll probably use washers to stagger it a bit. And then, yeah, so I've got to try and find a uh, sprocket, sprockets online, whatever. So, as unbelievable and as wantonly destructive as it seems, I'm going to have to despoke this wheel. And I can't really be asked with uh, <coughs> I can't really be asked with uh, taking all the rusty bolts out. So, I'm just going to hack all the spokes off. I'll put these two blocks of wood here to stop the bottom cables touching the floor. Yeah, where's that grinder? So, unfortunately that needed to be done and it was a bit savage, I'll be honest, but it's for the greater good, it's what he would have wanted to be turned into something better than he was before.
Hey. <clears throat> Feels a fair bit lighter now. Uh, so it's turn. So yeah, that's the uh, motor itself. That will be the back. This will be the front. And it will slot into something that will hold on to the two spindles. Oh, one more little bolt. Wicked. That's it for now. Bye, bye, bye.